police reform, defunding the police, abolishing the police. All three of these are approaches on the left from liberal to progressive to radical that are attempting to respond to the current crisis around policing and justice in America. Well, last night, Republican Senator John Kennedy decided to respond to this. He joined Fox News' as Sean Hannity to discuss his response to Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib's call to abolish the police. Senator Kennedy said the rule for not calling all Muslims terrorists when a radical Muslim jihadist blows up a school should also apply to police officers. He then said, if you hate cops just because they're cops, next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead and see how that goes. So there's a few things wrong with what the senator said. First off, we don't use language like crackhead to talk about people who are dealing with or even struggling with drug addiction. It's dehumanizing, it's improper, and it's exactly what's wrong with the GOP political discourse. But secondly, with regard to this topic, the people out there in the street don't hate police. They have an issue with police sing. Now, they may have issues with individual cops, but that's not the argument on the ground. They're worried about the police officers and how they serve as an occupying force in our communities. They're calling for defunding the police, not because there's an issue with an individual cop per se, but because it's an opportunity to reimagine and reshape the system so that we can invest in resources that make everybody's lives more livable, more safe, more just as opposed to more difficult, more painful, and more vulnerable. Defunding is not an attack on police. It's rather an opportunity to change the world. Here to discuss this with me and probably disagree with me is conservative analyst, Dr. Christopher Metzler. Christopher, good to see you as always, my brother. So you've heard my main point. I wanna give you a chance to respond. Well, I think your main point is correct. The issue here is looking at policing, but here's the problem. The problem is, in fact, the words and the language. Look, if, if folks on the left know that the GOP will take whatever they say literally and use it against them. The issue here is that there is significant need for police reform and police structure. Uh, as to Senator Kennedy, don't even get me started. So you say the part of this is language. So for you, this is partly a tactical issue as much as it is an issue of substance. And President Obama has said the same thing, right? Don't use the word defunding because it's sort of a red herring or a distraction from the reform that needs to happen. But let me be very clear, as someone who identifies as an abolitionist uh, and sees defunding as a step toward abolition, I don't want to reform the system. I want to dismantle it. I don't believe that the system is broken and we need to make it work. I think the system is working directly as it's designed and we need to break it. And so for me, that means taking the money out of policing, quite literally, and putting it in other areas of need so that we can make people's lives better. What do you say? Well, I, I, I don't agree with that for a number of things, for a number of reasons. One, I do agree with you that the entire system needs to be dismantled. However, um, you dismantle the system and in the meantime, do what? Look, I, I, I think there are some significant policy issues here. There are signif some significant, and when you talk about police officers, the issue I think in some cases is not only the police officers themselves, it is the entire system in which it is based. There is a two-pronged approach, or there's supposed to be, protect and serve. That's gone by the wayside. I don't see, however, how you simply rip the money from the police a budget and accomplish policing. I don't see it. Well, that's my point. I don't want to accomplish policing. I want to do something different because I'm saying policing doesn't work. Let's take the money out of policing and invest it in institutions. You made a great point. You said the system that on which policing is situated also doesn't work. And so, for example, I'll give you a concrete example. If I uh, am a police officer, or let me not use myself, I don't like that. If you are a police officer and you have to go to somebody in need who's having a mental health episode, now you show up to the scene, that person it might be wielding a knife as we saw with uh, a situation like uh, Walter Wallace in Philadelphia back in November of 2020. You're not a trained mental health uh, uh, worker, you're not a therapist, you're not a social worker, you're armed with a gun. And your job is to try to de-escalate the situation, even though you're, most, most, of, most of your training doesn't necessarily prepare you for this type of incident. So that's the backdrop. So in that case, the police officer 
shoots the person with, with, the, with the knife as he's coming toward him, and you say, well, that's a good shoot, that's a clean shoot, that's what somebody might say. But the question is, was the police officer put in a position where they could do anything else? And if not, what can we change in the system so that that person with the nice mental health needs are met before they get in that situation? And how, if, if the police officer does show up to that scene, who else would show up to that scene instead of the police officer or with the police officer in the current moment that could help the officer get through this process without using the gun? Well, I think it's the person who shows up with the police officer. I don't think it's the person who shows up instead of the police of, police officer. Going back to what you just said, the analogy that you just used. So the police, the mental health worker shows up, uh, the person has the knife, uh, and then the person turns up and actually stabs and kills the mental health worker. Then what? It, it's, a, it's a great question. So there's two, there's two points to this, right? As we're talking about defunding right now. If, would you agree that if we fund mental health resources, institutions in our communities, community-based mental health support, that if we have it in the schools, if we give people access to, to, uh, to drugs so that they can, um, so that they can sort of not have the episode in the first place, we have less need for police to show up on those scenes. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, I would absolutely agree with that because in fact, I think that's a main part of the problem because in fact, uh, there is a, predisposition uh, to not be able to treat people with mental illness. And in fact, what has happened is you've got so many people with mental illnesses and the police is not ready to handle that. They're there for purposes of uh, catching the bad guys, so to speak. So yeah, I agree. There is a deeper societal need for the funding of mental health because I think being able to do that then lessens the, the chance, of course, it will never completely eliminate it, but lessens the chance of these incidents occurring. So yes, I would agree with that. So then, Chris, if you're saying, if you're agreeing, Dr. Metzler, that, that the, the, the investment in those mental health resources would require us to need fewer police officers, then you're agreeing that if we put the money in this pile over here, we could take it out of the police pile. You have effectively agreed with defunding. <laughs> No, 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 absolutely not. I don't, I think the city looks at its complete budget. One of the things for me is, as it looks, as it relates to the cities and spending, those kinds of things, I think it looks at its complete budget. It just doesn't simply take it out of the police officer budget. What about the city's own mental health budget? Why do you have to take it out specifically out of the police officer's budget? That I don't agree with. And here's the reason why you have to take it out of the police budget, for two reasons. One, because there's a direct relationship between these two things. Again, if we invest in mental health resources early on, people won't have episodes that will be less violent. Similar to if we invest in schools more now, we won't have to invest as much in prisons later because there's a correlation between those two things. But the other thing is that the police officer, him or herself, is doing the work of those workers. The police officer right now in a town like Ferguson was the tax collector, stopping people for, for jaywalking. That's how Mike Brown got stopped and 80% of people in Ferguson in 2014 had warrants. The, the, they're also the drug treatment counselor. If somebody falls asleep in a, in a Burger King parking lot or Wendy's parking lot, like, like we saw in Atlanta, uh, you, they end up dealing with like public safety, right? If someone's having a domestic dispute, they call the police. If someone has an OD, they, they become the drug treatment counselor. The police officers are doing all of these jobs. And so if we can take the money out of their budget and put it into the people who should be doing those jobs, that just makes sense. Right. I mean, Chris, if you need a personal assistant or and, and, and you need a dry cleaner and you need a tailor and, and, and you're going to take money out of your budget and give it to them. You, you, are you defunding yourself or in a way, but you're taking things off of your plate. And so even for you all who love cops and, and like cops, which is your prerogative, um, it, look at it like this. You're taking stuff off of their plate. But I want to say one more thing. and I'll make sure you got time to respond. You asked me what um, you asked me what happens to the, the, the worker who comes in place of the police officer uh, in, in the case of someone wielding a knife. My point is twofold. One, we can invest on the front end so that happens less often, but, but we're ne we'll never be free of violence. We'll never be free of people who do harm to one another. What we have to do is imagine a system where we can have public safety, where we can have public protection, where we can have communities and, and not lean on policing as the only model. If the only tool you have is a hammer, everything's gonna look like a nail. 
So we have to find a way to imagine new tools and produce new tools so we can respond differently. Well, okay, I'll grant you that we have to look at new tools and respond differently. However, I don't agree and will never agree with the idea of uh, defunding the police. I, I just think for purposes of public safety and otherwise, I think it's a question of augmenting uh, the skills. I think it's a question of, of also looking at investing in uh, mental health issues earlier. But I also think these are policy issues. If we go about talking about defunding the police as a tactic, here's the question for me. So what are the city managers doing? Um, you look at a city like Baltimore, for example, why is the crime rate so high in the city of Baltimore? And they're talking about defunding the police. To do what, Baltimore? I mean, so when you look at those issues, there are instances in which the police are going to have to respond to violence. As you just said, we will never be completely free of violence. This is a policy question that I think has to be answered by those people who we elect to office just to do that. So a blanket theme of defunding the police, to me, uh, is more theater than it is policy. Well, we've seen it in Minneapolis, we've seen it in Austin, we've seen it in Camden. You know, we see defunding efforts happen all the time. Uh, but let me ask you one quick question before we go. If you knew that taking, say, 10% out of a police budget and investing it in mental health would make people safer and reduce crime, would you, would you be for it? Well, yes, if, if in fact those were the facts. If in fact it was proven so, that that is, that is correct. If the data supported that, absolutely. Okay, so, so what we can do then as we track these cities where defunding is beginning to happen and money is being allocated, as opposed to a place like Austin where the 150 million is, has been taken out but hasn't been dumped into other places yet. Um, but we can look at this and examine and see how it turns out. But I suspect, Dr. Metzler, that you will support defunding once it all plays out. <laughs> I don't think so, Dr. Hill. I don't think so. You're not gonna it's worth a shot. The dark side. <laughs> I'm going to try, man. The, the dark side is where we all belong, my brother. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Guess, Christopher Metzler. Right. A wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful voice in conservative America. Stay with us at Black News Tonight. We'll be right back.